September 9, 9.52am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Ace Attorney. This is Turnabout Sisters Trial Day 3. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Ah! Phoenix, look! Prosecutor Edgeworth. I received a call from the Chief Prosecutor's Office yesterday. I was told that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how you try to attack his testimony, if I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What? Does White have the judge in his pocket too? So you're saying I'm going to be guilty? End of story? I will do anything to get my verdict, Mr. Wright. Anything. Why? Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth. You've changed. Hmm? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix, right? F Phoenix? Well, court will be starting soon. What? But wait. The defense attorney isn't even here yet. They're not... I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. You might have been able to guess that Phoenix was going to defend himself because what else would happen in this game? <laughs> uh, September 9, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are already quite clear to the court, today we will hear the testimony of a witness to the defendant's crime. I see. Prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... it's like he already knows why. Hmm. If anyone's gonna raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Mr. Edgeworth, you owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify in the trial against Miss Maya Fay? Hmm. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time I thought that Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. Great. He gets to show off and I get nowhere. I'd like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? Uh, your name? Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, do my locutions confuse? Name! These two are great together. My name is Red White. My friends call me Blanco Nino. <laughs> Alright, if you say so. I am the CEO, which is a more common term, the President of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim? Miss Mia Fey. That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder? Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there? Ahem. Why tell you what you already know? Very well, Mr. White. You may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? Ho oh. ho ho. 
I, you've made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Wow. <laughs> it's quite a line. Let him have it, Phoenix. Oh, there's Maya. There she is. It's a, it's a, it's a um, lawyer's aid sprite. Cute. Cute. Witnesses account. Let's see. It was about nine o'clock, I believe. I was quietly perusifying, uh, that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She too was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she... She ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then it was all over. Hmm. If things occurred as you testify, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant. Uh, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I don't think there's actually any contradictions in this as it stands. I believe what we have to do is press certain spots in order to get some more information. Uh, hold it! A bedlam? It must have been when you attacked, I assume. We see. Continue. Might didn't give me any information at all. Uh, let's try pressing here. Because a terrible impaction... That's not much information. Hold it! Um... Impaction? Don't you mean just impact? Ridiculosity! I think you need to brush up on your language skills. On second thought, perhaps I'd better leave the whole language thing alone. Did you prep this guy too, I wonder? Anyway, I better find a weakness in there. I believe the time is right. You don't have evidence of what time it was, but I believe that's the right time. Hold it! S -s Spiky head? <laughs> that's all I had to say? Okay. Hold it! What you just said directly conflicts with Miss May's testimony. Miss May clearly stated that the assailant looked like a girl. I've always been proud of my eyesight, Mr. Lawyer. Just what is your eyesight? Counting both eyes? 40. 40? Don't add them together. I think the witness is trying to say his eyesight is good. Hey, whose side is the judge on anyway? And what did you do then? Give me a little more detailed about that. I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course! Comprende! I understand. The victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to reflect this new detail. The victim ran to the left, and you gave chase. So yeah, this is the important detail. This is the one we need. Because, as you might remember, Miss May told us the opposite. Therefore... OBJECTION! Wait right there! Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left. But that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly said that the victim ran right. Oh, it is simple. You have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here. And the victim, here. The victim ran to the left, as you claim she did. She would be running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Very strange. I did see a run to the left. I did. 
Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run left. So he did witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Yes, I can. Both witnesses are telling the truth, for once. Huh, <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean? He was not viewing the crime from the hotel. If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law offices of Fay and Co, of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Time to show the court where Mr. White was standing. Over here. <laughs> this is where he was. Look, when the victim ran for the door, if he was watching from this point, to him it would appear that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Order. I will have order. Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? R Rapscallion! Objection! Postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far-fetched. Ho ho ho! You provide us with so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing? The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this I apologise. Mr. Your Honour, might I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck, you can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. She ran to the quote-unquote left. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left. And you hit her, savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strengths, you ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. And that is what Miss May saw. You see, you hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Hmm, that does seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. So, the problem with this testimony is that we have an autopsy report. And that autopsy report says she only got hit once. Or is it used to? It, it, it does still say that, it's just not showing us that. So, clearly... We didn't- she didn't get hit twice, because she was killed by a single blow, and the autopsy report co corroborates that fact. So... OBJECTION! Mr. White. The victim died from a single blow. What do you have to say to that? Uh... uh now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a ten minute break. Yes, yes, quite. The witness is confused because he's lying. I emphatically request that there be no break, Your Honor. Yeah, we want justice. Don't let him get away. Very well. If the witness would care to revise his testimony. The crowd's on my side. No slipping out of this now, White. Mr. White? Oh, uh, okay. The two accounts. 
Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. Then, the next moment, I saw Miss Mia run to the left. The killer, you, attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then... She turned and ran to the door. Then you did her in with a single blow. Thwap! Hmm. Thwap indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, it is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. Okay, so what we want to know is what that thing is, the one thing that fell, because that's very vague. You heard that thing fall? What exactly was that thing? Huh? Oh, well, uh, that, um, the glass light stand. Right, the one that had fallen over at the scene. Phoenix, doesn't it something about that strike you as odd? Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. Wyatt. Huh? W what? You're saying you saw the glass light stand? Y yes Then change your testimony to reflect that. S sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. So, the problem here is if we look at the shards of the light stand, you can see that they don't look like a glass light stand anymore, they're just chunks of glass, and there's no way of knowing what it was before it broke. Like it says, broken beyond a recognition, which means that that doesn't make any sense. Therefore... Objection! Objection! Mr. White. It was impossible for you to have seen the light stand. What? The stand broke into pieces when it fell. Just by seeing the broken pieces, you have no idea it was a light stand. What is a light stand? I've played this game so many times, I just realized I don't know what that is. <laughs> so tell me, exactly when was it you saw the stand? Answer the question. I isn't it obvious? I saw the stand before it fell over. So you saw the stand before the victim was attacked then? C correct that would be no problemo, right? Hmm. Actually, that's a big problemo, because if you look at the uh, floor plan here, you can see the light stand would have been outside the window, like way over the side there, where you can't see it from the hotel. There's a big problemo. Oh, I mean, problem. Yeah. What problem is this? Mr. White, let me make sure I have this straight. You saw the light stand, glass light stand, through the window from the hotel before the incident occurred. Correct! That is so. It's conclusive, definitive, undeniable, unimpeachable. No, it's impossible. You couldn't have seen the stand. What? Why couldn't he? You have proof? I sure do, Your Honor. The person in the hotel could not have seen the light stand before it fell over. Look at this. These are the floor plans to the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window of the, of the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well, know that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White. What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, ridiculosity. Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell over either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards as a glass light stand. What is a light stand? <laughs> So, when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell. And the only place you could have seen that from is inside the Fay Law Offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. <laughs> Mr. White? 
Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I... I... Miss Mia. <laughs> Looks like we're about to get our verdict. Objection! That's far enough, Phoenix Wright. W what? Ugh, I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now? Hm? W what? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo. Confess that you placed the wiretap. The wiretap? Order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court. Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Fay. What does that have to do? Your Honor. The question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office and by who? It's by who, Medgeworth? You should know that. No, you wouldn't. Mr. White. In order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Fay's office. Am I correct? C correct you are most correct, Miles. Give me a break. Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Fay and Co. law offices. That is when I saw that accursed light stand. Now I'm confused. Please explain to the core what all this means, Mr. Edgeworth. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand, at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like you to believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been to that office well before the murder took place. When he went to place the wiretap, he could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed for the baseless conjecture it is. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretapping. Ahem. Leave it to me. I... I feel faint. The wiretapping. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fay and Co. law offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Hmm, so you saw the stand before the night of the incident, and this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over, by the sound? Correct, that is right. I see. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine. Ugh, what am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix! Hold it! D do you have proof? Miss April May knew the details of Miss Faye's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Huh, right. Was it really you that went into the office? Or was it Miss May? Unidentified fingerprints several days old were found in the Faye and Co. law offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. And if I know Edgeworth, he's already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the Fay and Co. law offices. Of course I had done so to place the wiretap. Why did you tap me as phone? This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a beautious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. 
Damn it, there's nothing here there for me to press him on. Oh well, maybe he's rattled enough that I can bluff something out of him. Um, basically you just have to loop through the whole testimony twice. So I might just fast forward this bit. Since you already heard this. Uh-oh, don't tell me I've run out of ammo. Tss, tss, tss. I'm afraid that's as far as you go, Mr. Wright. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Y yes, Your Honor. Phoenix. Hmm? Phoenix, over here. I know that voice. M Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. M M M Mia? Where, where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Ah, you're finally awake. Gak! Hey, hey, Phoenix! Gak? That's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. Y you're... M Maya? Didn't you know the Fae women have strong psychic powers? When you accepted your defeat in court, it appears that was enough of a shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So, Maya is channeling you, Mia? That's right. I am Maya, but I'm also Mia. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's what I came here to tell you. But, but... We don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have that receipt in the court record, right? Um, oh yeah. The, the one you wrote Maya on? Phoenix, right, White wrote that, not me. So, so what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The... front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. One thousand dollars. Wow, a big spender. Item. Glass light stand. Date of purchase, September 4. September 4! That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa. Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It's the beginning of September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go! I think the court is about to reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. Receipt updated in the court record. September 9, 1.16pm. District Court. Courtroom number one. So yeah, um, Maya can in fact channel spirits of, of, of those who have passed away. That is one of her powers, and that happens fairly regularly. <laughs> Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is the defendant rather... Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where we left off. Your Honor. There is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that's required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Your Honor, please, give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. But as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an opinion on this matter? I say. Let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. C. 
So we're back in this cross-examination again, but this time we know how to turn over a receipt and look at the front side of it. <laughs> this, it's interesting because Phoenix actually did look at the front of the receipt when he first found it, because he knew it was a receipt, but he didn't think that he might want to look at it ever again. Objection! Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? Wah! You're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The uh, other side? Your Honor, would you tell the court what is written on the other side of that receipt? Hmm. Well, a glass light stand and the date of purchase. Why, that's the day before the murder. You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Fay and Co. Law Offices the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No. It's impossible achievable. Uh-oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you'll agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then, that is all for the trial of... Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. Huh? What? No way can he worm his way out of this one. Oh wait, forgot. It's Edgeworth. There is a certain thread of logic the defendants claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Ergo, I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. Mr. White's guilt is obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? If anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it would be me, the prosecution. I need a day to ascertain whether these new claims have any basis in factual evidence. Hmm. I see. Objection denied. What? The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. No! There's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sure to come up with or just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me and all. Mr. Your Honor. May I go home? Of course. Thank you for your time. Gah! The witness will stay. M Mia? Phoenix. Read this note out loud. Mia? What's this? Mima received from Mia. Your Honor, if I may? You're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. You bet I am. My wife is writing on this one. I have something I'd like to read to the court. The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. S stop! Desist! Halt! P please stop! Make him stop! How? How did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt right here, right now. Or else this list will be released to the press. I... I confess. I confess. I... I did it. I hit her. I hit Miss Mia with... The Thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. Well, I see no reason to continue this trial. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again. That was quite a spirited defense. Yes, Your Honor. I guess you could say that. I mean, you knew how spirited it was. 
Hmm, well. This court finds the defense. Ahem. Oh, rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not. Guilty. Yay! Woohoo! Yay! That is all. This court is adjourned. September 9, 2.24pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, never thought I'd be saying this again, but congratulations! You're lucky I was born a fae. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. Fe fe Phoenix. <laughs> you risked a lot to help me, and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here is running out. Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. But what? No! There's still so much to say. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Ch chief <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix? Can you come to the office tonight? Say, 9 o'clock? The office? I'll see you later. Chief. Mia! September 9, 9.02pm, Faye and Co. Law Offices. Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came! Mia? I was kind of worried you might not. Huh? Of course I came. Well then, I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? M Mia? Wahaha! <laughs> you should see your face! Mia. What are you talking about? It's me, Maya! M Maya? What? Do I look like my sister? Look like? You were her! Hmm. I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix! Go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Uh, Maya, why are you here? Because of this! See? Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... huh? She means the office! This office! Someone has to help with the new Wright & Co. Law Offices, right? And who better but me, Maya Faye, reporting for duty! Wait, no, on second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick! Maya here, ready to get down to business. You... don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name. Mia said that's what your friend Larry calls you. Nick? You know what this means? We're partners! You know, when I think about it, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Wright & Co. Law Offices. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here, watching. Right, okay, Nick, let's do it. Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy, burgers! There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on, time's a-wasting. Uh, okay, wait up. And that's the end of Turnabout Sisters. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time is Turnabout Samurai. Anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Next time we'll be moving on to Turnabout Samurai, and then the next case, and yeah.